Tips and tricks. We're going to do some tips and tricks with John Cruz featuring missile baits and some other terminal tackle that you've come out with now. Is that under missile baits or missile jigs? Uh, missile baits. But I tell you, the, the what I really wanted to uh, to kind of break down a little bit is um, is the, is the, ne the Neko rig. And and first of all, I was calling it the wrong name for the longest time, and I've it's still hard to break the habit because I want to call it the Neko rig because it looks like. Well, you tell me, what does that look like? It's Nico, man. That so, looks like Nico, right? But yeah. Nico would be two E's and then K-O, right? I have no idea, man. I'm, I'm bad at spelling. I can write. Well, this is Japanese. It's a Japanese technique. It is not an American technique. So I was told emphatically by Shin Fukai, it is called Neko Rig. He said, not Nico, it's Neko. It is not no Nico, Neko. I'll take Shin's word for it. Oh, that's what he said. He said, I swear, he's like, that's what it is. And um, you know, for the last number of years, I've been playing around with the technique quite a bit. Last year, I caught a good number of fish on the Neko rig. And and so, you know, with most of the things I do, uh, we, we designed, I designed the quiver. Uh, one of the main reasons I designed the quiver was to fish on a Neko rig. And then we had, and this is the, uh, watch out, it's the four or five. 4.5 inch Neko uh, uh, quiver right there. And so I want to, I want to show you how easy it is to put, put one of these weights in. Now I designed these ones for, for missile. And these are you know different. Unlike anything on the market, we got a one thirty second up, up to the three sixteenths. Cause that's, that's the range, which you'll need for 99% of your, your Neko rig fishing. So you're going to take, take the weight, stick it into the head of the worm just like yay yeah and then and then that's that's the one part of it and then the other part let me find my hook over here i got so many baits out here i can't find the hook i want um oh here it is uh, i use one of two hooks i use the i've started out with this the this is the gamagatsu g finesse i'll put it against my forehead so you can see it i was going to suggest that that's fantastic um, it's the it's a one aught, I think the one aught works real well, and you're just gonna go into the worm right about yay and just harpoon it in the side. Now, some people will use a ring and fish it up, you know, straight up and down, but I, I just I don't like doing that. I, I found the hookup ratio is better this way, uh, and and I just don't lose fish, and, and I like the action. So that's that's the gist of what a Neko rig looks like. Uh, but the other hook that I'm playing around, I've been playing around with, and I really like it is the, the Gamagatsu G Finesse Stinger hook. And it, it's got a it's, it looks very similar to this, but it's got a longer hook shank. Uh, Brett Ayler was using the Stinger. It's a, it's a fly fishing hook. He was using that hook uh, on his drop shots. And then they, uh, Gamagatsu did the G Finesse version with the, with the better wire and the, and all that. Uh, but I really like that one as well. And it has a really nice weed guard on it. And so whenever the, the, you know, when you're starting out with the Neko rig, if you're using a lightweight, like a, like a one thirty second ounce, you, you really don't need a weed guard. So you can either use, you know, this, this drop shot hook right here or, uh, or that stinger hook or whatever type of similar hook you, you like. Um, it, the kind of the setup is 10 pound fluorocarbon leader, eight or 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. Uh, if I'm using the lighter weights, I like the eight pound. If I'm using the little bit heavier weights, I like the 10 pound and I use a uh, Sunline Sniper. It's just a real small diameter, thin wire, um, uh, thin diameter, real supple line. I'll use about a 20 foot leader onto 12 pound uh, Sunline braid. You know, that's kind of the, the setup. I, I like the, uh, the John Cruz drop shot rod because it's a, a counterbalance weight rod. It's a seven, four. It's a little bit longer. So what, whatever you're using, you want to use a little bit longer rod. You don't want to, you know, real short rod for, for your fish in the Neko rig. You just can't get a good hook set. And, um, and it's just a little more frustrating to fish. Uh, but then the 16th ounce, you can either use no weed guard or a weed guard. I think that's kind of, it's kind of the in-between. Uh, I've kind of gone to using a weed guard most of the time with a 16th ounce weight, but if you're using an eighth ounce or a three sixteenths, the heavier weights, those bait, those baits are going to be on the bottom quite a bit. And you're going to get, you're going to get hung up a fair amount if you don't put one of those hooks with a, with a weed guard on it. And uh, you'd be surprised at what you can get that. I mean, like you can get that thing through a brush pile. If you, uh, if you have that weed guard on it and you, you know, you really kind of just work it and take it easy through those brush piles for the most part. 
you can get them through there. So uh, that's kind of what you um, what you want to look for with with the weights and the hooks and and kind of your setup for those. I use a three thousand size Daiwa reel. I don't like the little small reels. You just you have a hard time handling those. Um, but I'm going to fish the Neko rig in areas not as much around docks. You can fish the Neko rig around docks 100. percent But if I'm going to a lake that does not have um, a lot of docks on it, and and I have the the steeper banks, and uh, or even the you know the slower grade banks, but I'm fishing somewhat around cover, man, that that Neko rig is really really tough on them. It is really good around deeper grass. Uh, you're throwing it around that those grass lines and just kind of working it through those grass lines. You don't need a weed guard when you're fishing around grass. Uh, it seems to come through there real easy, and uh, you can just kind of pull it through there, and uh, boom, they'll they'll just absolutely truck it. So that's uh, that's kind of like the the introduction to the Neko rig. If if anybody has not not had one, oh yeah, they like, angler, like boom. Well, angler just put a link on there for an article that they did with uh brandon polinick and uh, he and i have actually talked about the neko rig a little bit so uh whatever he's got to say i would uh, i would agree yeah, he's pretty good too y'all both are high y'all way better than, i mean y'all are better than me at everything i'll go ahead and say it but y'all are way better than me at finesse fish. i don't <laughs> I, I try man but i did not come up on that i didn't own a spinning reel until i was old enough to buy one for myself my dad gave me 50 bait casters before that. He didn't have a spinning reel other than one went crap, <clears throat> crappy fishing. But he, even when I finally got my own spinning reel, I really, on the wrong side, based on what everybody else says, which blows my mind because if you take a bait caster and you reel it like this and you pick up a spinning rod, you do the same motion, but everybody goes, nope, let's do this. And I just, I don't know, but hey, that's how I, I like the, I like it on the opposite side because it uh, you don't get as much over usage if because if, if you held the rod with, with both rods with the same hand and you reeled with the same hand you'd be more prone to over usage injuries and, and that's one of the reasons I like having the the spinning reel this way and then the bait caster this way yeah. is it is it kind of you kind of mix it up you try to flip with the other hand too for that same reason or do you flip with your main caster reel. Well, I mean, not to be like all fancy on you. A lot of guys do it, but I, I flip or and cast with both both hands, yeah. and a lot of it's because you can't hit the right angle. Right. If you only cast right handed, you'll never be able to hit. You get your lure to to a lot of the places where the fish are living, and so you've got to be able to hit them from from one side or the other. You know, based on where the cover is, or you, know, you might be coming up to a dock. You need to you need to get it that way. You you can't get your bait. With the right hand, you gotta throw it with your left hand to get it into where the fish is living. So uh, it just it makes it a lot better to be able to fish with with or cast with both both hands. Which brings up our next segment: word of the day, ambidextrous. Go, John. Spelling bee time. Ambidextrous. Yeah. Using both. I can't spell it. <laughs> I can't either. I just added that out. Yeah. Good, good time. Yeah. yeah. Ambidextrous. I mean, that's, so you do that. You throw it with both hands a lot and. Uh, and I, I forced myself to do it early on. I mean, I'm very right hand dominant, very, very right hand dominant. I mean, if I throw a, um, you know, a baseball or a football or something left handed, it's not pretty at all. Uh, I'm, I can throw pretty good. I can throw real well with my right hand, but my left side is not. And, and but just like anything else, it's a learned behavior, and and you can you can absolutely learn it. Uh, I've actually learned to throw a football left handed, really, uh, which is kind of fun. You know, like throw it, I can't throw it very far, but I can. I could throw a spiral. It's pretty, pretty funny. But um, so I've, I did the same thing. I mean, I, I remember when I was probably 21, 22, I went out on Smith Mountain Lake and I fished docks all day. With, and I had, I had three rods because I knew I was going to need them uh, all set up the same. And all I did was skip docks left handed and uh, blew up two of the three reels. But that one reel got me finished, finished the day out for me. But I fished. I was like eight or 10 hours. And all I did was, all I did was cast left-handed and, mm. you know, skip. And then I got to where I got pretty comfortable with it. And, uh, you know, I've, I've, you know, made a, made a choice to, uh, you know, just be conscious about it. And there's a, there's a number of guys on tour that do the same thing. I would say the majority of the guys are, 
are sufficient with, with both, both hands. Some are, I think, better than others with their non-dominant hand, but uh, it's just something if you, if you're serious about your tournament fishing uh, or your bass fishing, you, you need to learn the opposite, the opposite hand. It, it'll make you a better angler. Taking that same concept to what I was talking about, not being yeah. fishing, I'll do the same thing. Sometimes I'll force myself. I think, I think when I was doing a, I don't know if I was doing an arc with you or Paul it about spy bait fishing, but that was one of the things that one of y'all recommended was to just take that one rod out there and fish with it all day. And you'll catch, you'll be amazed at the number of fish you catch, but you're not going to pick it up if you've got 10 other things you have confidence in and you need to go out there and force yourself to do it. A hundred percent. That's it. That's the deal. You know, and I've, uh, I do the, and, and one of the things that's been kind of funny is uh, filming those shows with Charlie Ingram, the fishing universities, uh, I've done probably 10 or 12 shows with them and I've done, you know, jerk baits and, you know, crank baits. And we did a spy bait show last year. It just aired recently and that you throw it all day. And, uh, even drew cook, he was, uh, I invited, we invited him to come, to come fish with us. And he, he's like, man, I don't know anything about a spy bait. And I said, dude, you're going to be fine. He said, why? I said, you're a good fisherman. And when you can only use that one lure, I said, you'll figure it out, buddy. And, Darren, if he didn't, he said, man, he had said at the end of the day, you know, we went out to dinner after the first full day of fishing and he said, man, he said, you're right. He said, they, they eat that thing. I said, man, I, tr I tried to tell you, he said, you know, we just, but it forced him to only fish that one lure. And, uh, and, and Charlie was the same way. Charlie had literally caught two fish on a spy bait before that show. And, uh, he got it, he got to where he got the hang of it. He, he, he understood it by the end of the, end of the two days we were shooting.